our big crew of five here today. It's going to be great. <laughs> so my name is Amy Roberts, and I'm a, a loan officer for Northwest Farm Credit Services. And I specialize in young beginning and small producers. So I'm going to talk today about um, getting started in your farm and some of the financial pieces that you need for your foundation. So this is our agenda. So I'm going to talk a little bit about who Farm Credit is, um, the steps that you need to take when you're choosing an egg lender, also the special programs that we have that are available for people that are getting going in agriculture, and then also the, um, the credit piece, and not just um, credit score, but how lenders make their decisions about you, and then what it takes to prepare to meet with a lender. And then we are also going to go into credit scores uh, pretty in depth. So, like I said, I'm a relationship manager for Farm Credit. I have a, an, undergraduate, an undergraduate from the University of Montana, Missoula, as well as an MBA. So I've been with Farm Credit for about three years, and all that time I've worked in the Ag Vision program, which is our special program for young beginning and small producers. So I'd like to start my presentations with our purpose. Um, we truly live this every day at Farm Credit. It's very important to us in doing business with our customers um, that you align with these values that, and that we can share um, this mission together. So we're proud of this. Um, we've been doing this for 100 years, and uh, we truly stand by that. So who Farm Credit is, so we're in five different states, Washington, Idaho, Oregon, and Montana. Um, we also serve the fisheries out of Alaska. And we, tr we truly finance anything that chews or grows. So we have financed over 145 commodities in these five states. And we have served currently, um, this is last year's numbers, we're almost up over 20,000 now, farmers and ranchers in agriculture. So we're very involved in this industry. This is what we do. So we provide financing and related services to farmers and ranchers. Um, we do have some eligibility requirements. You need to fall into one of these areas to get financing from Farm Credit. Um, Part-time farmer, though, can mean only selling $500 a year in, in, in egg products. So we also finance to rural homeowners. So people that live maybe um, like Columbia Falls would be a place where we can finance. Um, Farm-related businesses, agriculture cooperatives, and rural utilities. And these are the services, so there's a lot on there, and I, I put this up there to highlight that really anything that you might need to do within your operation, we can offer. So I think that we're truly a one-stop shop. Um, it's nice to have a company where um, they can provide everything that you need. It makes the convenience um, much easier for your operation. And it's, it's hard in egg, there's a lot going on. So when you have one company that can do everything for you, it really simplifies that process. So these are, are the things that make us unique. Um, I think first and foremost is our focus on agriculture, food, and fiber, in that we know this business and we know it well. Um, our trusted advisor relationships, so we really focus when we get new customers that that becomes a relationship. It's not transactional. We're not trying to put you in a box and get you out the door. We really want to work with you to help you become the best and most efficient operators that you can be. Um, Even-handedness, this is extremely important in that uh, commodities cycle and they cycle frequently and sometimes they come down very far and if you don't have an operator, a line of credit operator that will stand with you, you know, when cattle is half of what it was last year, that can put you in a tough spot. So you want someone that's going to stick with you. Also our cooperative structure, so when you get a loan with us you become a member owner and what that means is that every year you get a dividend back. So this year we're giving back 1%. Um, so of your average daily loan balance, you get 1% back in a check every year. And um, it's a pretty nice little chunk of change to get in the spring. And then also being part of the farm credit system. It is a nationwide system, so we do have access to many more resources than other banks do um, as part of that. In terms of funding for interest rates for specialized programs, we have a lot of flexibility within that system. These are our locations. We do have 12 different branches in Montana, so there is one near you. Um, so yeah, go visit with them. <laughs> so choosing an egg lender. So if you are at the point of where you think that you need some additional financing, whether it's to improve your operation, to expand, to get started, uh, this is quite the process to go through. Um, egg lenders can be very different from each other, so there's a, a lot of thought that needs to go into it. 
So the first thing to do, define what it is that you want to do. Um, truly, are you looking to buy equipment? Do you need new land? Do you need to expand your land? Do you need to make capital renovations? You know, what is it exactly that you're hoping to accomplish? Um, what's going to be the best for your operation? So get that nailed down first because that's going to define uh, who can actually serve your operation the best. I would say always to start with your current lending institution. Uh, wherever you have your checking and savings, go into the bank, ask to talk to someone that's an egg lender if they have one that specifically focuses on egg, or just or just a, a personal banker even. Um, you just make sure that you're getting into the in front of the right person that can truly help you. Um, and I, I say to start there because you have a relationship with them, and, and they're likely where you might have gotten your car loan or. Um, had your deposits constantly, so they've seen that you can manage money. So it's an, it's an easy place to start. So the basics that you're looking for when you're going to choose an egg lender. Um, so product, so when I say product, that's truly the loan product, whether that's a term loan for a tractor or a cow, or a long-term real estate note, or an operating loan, those are all called products. And so what you want to look for in those products is do they have competitive rates? Um, can they match a term for you? So if you need to buy cows and you want to, or even let's say you want to buy hoop, a hoop house, if you want to amortize that over seven years, do they have the avail availability to offer you that term? Or are they going to make you term it out over three years? So you want to you wanna match up what it is that you need for your cash flow and for your capital expenditures. And then also structure. And what I mean by structure is that for, at Farm Credit, we can match whatever your cash flow is. So if you only get one check a year, you don't want to be paying your loans off every month. You know, you want to make one annual payment. So you want to be sure to work with a bank that can structure their loans to match your cash flow. Also, does that bank have resources? So this means, do they do market research? Can they provide you with information that's going to help you do business better? Um, and that should be readily available, um, whether online or in the information that they send out you know, quarterly. However it is, you want to be sure that you have access to that market research for the industry that you're in. And then also, do they offer opportunities for education? Um, agriculture is a constantly evolving industry, and it takes a lot of work to stay up on what's going on. So are they going to help you do that? Do they offer workshops, seminars? Will they send you to other companies to learn those things? And what is it that they can make available to you? And then also alignment. I think about, you know, if you, you need a team around you when you're an operator and a producer, people that can help you um, along the way. And so you want your, your loan officer to be one of those people. You want them to be part of your team, someone that you can go to for advice. So make sure that they really see that in you as well, that they want to create a relationship with you. And also the values that they offer. You know, do they give back? Are they stewards of their communities? Um, do they donate to charities? You know, what is it that is important to you? You can really look for that in a lender as well. Um, so some other considerations to make. Do they have a long-term presence in agriculture? Um, the industry knowledge, I mean, it, it's hard if you sit down with a commercial banker and they've never raised vegetables. I mean, how do they know what the different marketing channels are? Do they know what the cost is? I mean, when they're evaluating your financials, you want to know that they have experience in that as well. And then also, can they loan you what you need? If you need only $5,000, do they have minimums that cut that off? Um, or if you need $5 million, do they have maximums that cut that off? Because you don't want to have to... to um, cherry pick, you know, I can only do 5 million here and 10 million here or 2,000 here, whatever it is. You want to make sure that they can match what you need. Also that they're competitive, um, especially if you're just getting started and maybe you don't have the same capital or liquidity that other producers do. Um, sometimes they'll still give you a loan, but that interest rate's going to be really high. So you want to make sure that you still get a competitive interest rate, no matter your situation. Um, that they establish trust with you. Um, that you and that they're transparent. So, and that specifically relates to the cost of your loan. So, are what are the fees that they're going to charge you, um, and are those fair? And you want to make sure that those are pieces that you understand coming into it, so that you're not surprised on the back end. So, questions to ask: um, Do you lend to egg operations like mine? I'm running into this a lot with, especially smaller producers. Um, you know, vegetables are still relatively new, This um, the idea of organic vegetable producers, that's a niche that bankers are still trying to fill. 
And so it's hard to get those loans passed underwriting committees still. So you want to make sure that you're sitting down with a loan officer that understands exactly what it is that you're doing, um, whether it's cattle, vegetables, or small grains, whatever it might be. How much can you lend me? Um, what happens if my operation has a bad year? You know, what do they do specifically to help you through that? Because you want to make sure that they're not going to ghost you, as the kids say. Um, who approves my request? And so this specifically relates to what delegated authority does your loan officer have to help you? And it, it's okay if they need to ask permission from one level up for your financing request or your servicing action, but if they're little simple things, you want to make sure that your loan officer can do that themselves because it can get really frustrating if every little thing that you ask for has to get run up a chain. And then also do your cellular loans on the secondary market. So this is more related to real estate um, because a lot, of, a lot of banks will get a loan and then immediately sell it. And that can be a very frustrating process because then the way that you pay it, who you call to service it, all those pieces change and you don't have any control over that. So you want to understand where does my loan go after I sign, it, I sign up with you all. So our programs at Farm Credit, so like I said, we have Ag Vision, which is for um, young beginning or small producers. So you just need to meet one of these requirements, not all three. So either younger than 35, 10 years or less of experience, or 250,000 of gross farm production in a year. So what Ag Vision does is you immediately get a competitive interest rate. And um, so pretty much most banks price to risk. And so whatever, you know, if you're in Ag Vision, you, whatever you fall into, then you get bumped up to the next level. So you get better pricing based on where you are and your financial status today. Also, we do fee waivers. So you get up to 2,000 in appraisal fees to waive, and then 2,000 in loan origination fees. And that's really helpful when you are starting to get into Ag and you need to hang on to as much cash as you can. Um, you want to be sure that uh, you're not spending that on loan fees. You want to retain that for your working capital in those pieces. We also offer edu education and technology reimbursements. So if you need a new phone or a new GPS, you get $500 that you can use towards that. Um, you just buy it and then Farm Credit will reimburse you. Um, you also get $500 for travel. So if you came to this event from um, out of the city and you needed, a, you needed to pay for gas, you needed to pay for food, you needed to pay for lodging, Farm Credit will reimburse you for all of those things anytime that you go to an educational commodity workshop or conference. And then you get an additional 1000 on top of that for those related expenses to anything that Farm Credit hosts. So this really gives you a lot of opportunities to um, better yourself as an operator. Uh, another piece about Ag Vision is that we really believe in mentorship, and so we'll help people um, to get involved in the leadership opportunities in agriculture in their communities, as well as connect with local advisors that we have. So local advisors, we have five for each branch. So these are people that um, have been in agriculture a long time that are great operators that are invested in farm credit and so we connect our Ag Vision customers with those local advisors so that you can really learn um, how people are successful in whatever industry that you're in. And then we also have um, additional education and networking opportunities. So we put on a dedicated Young and Beginning Producers Conference in Spokane every year, usually in January, February. And it's a three-day conference that you're invited to that Farm Credit pays for everything. And we have some pretty notable speakers that come and talk about um, everything to do with agriculture. And then you also get to meet people that are in similar situations to you. So that's a really good opportunity. Um, every year we offer financial workshops and then similar um, commodity symposiums and webinars. So there's lots of opportunities to get out there and get involved. Another loan that we have specifically for Ag Vision customers is called Jumpstart. And this is a pretty unique loan. Um, so with this loan, you can borrow up to $1,000. And it can be used for down payments, operating expenses, capital items. Um, and it's interest only for five years, which is the really great piece about it. And so if you're really in the startup stage, this gives you five years to get to the point where you are making a profit every year, where you're comfortable, where you're able to repay your debt obligations, because um, that can take up to five years sometimes. So this is an awesome opportunity for people um, that might not even fit our normal requirements for Ag Vision. Another program that we have is called RateWise. 
And so rate Y is a place to all new loans and re renewals. And what this is is, so you will get credits for education. So you will get credits for today. Um, and then you sign up online and you start accruing these credits. And then whenever you get a new loan or renew, like an operating loan, you can apply those credits for interest rate reductions. So this is a great way to save money on your loan by doing stuff that you might be doing in the normal course of your life anyways. Um, so these can be they're used for three-year interest rate reductions. This is how those credits shake out. Uh, you can actually start doing that today, even if you're not a customer of Farm Credit. Just register at that website, and they'll actually do, they'll have a year-long look-back period. So from today to a year ago, if you sign up today, you could go back 12 months, and they would give you credit for all the stuff that you've done in that 12 months. Um, and then six years after your registration date is how long you can accrue those rate-wise credits. So I always encourage people, even if you're just thinking in general about getting a loan someday down the road to sign up for this because it can save you some money. So now I'm going to talk about how we make decisions about you and if, how you are viewed in terms of your credit risk. So we, we call this in lending the five C's of credit. And um, so the first C is character. And so this is truly who you are. Um, we look at this from several different angles. Um, the first being production. Um, how is it that you produce your product? Um, are you at the forefront of your industry, or do you kind of do what grandpa or dad or grandma did for their whole lives? Um, also, how do you market? I mean, there, there's so many ways to market products now in agriculture. Um, it's not just that you take cows to auction, or your grain to the elevator, or your vegetables to the farmer's market. Uh, there's hedging, there's puts, there's calls. I mean, all these pieces that come together to create a truly effective marketing plan. So we want to know how is it that you market your products and is it working well? Um, also planning. You know, how do you plan every year? Do you just put spring wheat in the ground every year or do you really evaluate what's gonna, what the markets are doing? Should you maybe try pulse crops? Do you need um, cover crops? You know, what is it that you're doing to plan for your operation? Also, your um, financial management capabilities. And this comes down a lot to record keeping. So in terms of um, have you kept accurate records? Do you, you know, is it QuickBooks, Quick In? I mean, that doesn't always have to be that way. But even we have these little farm credit record keeping books. Do you keep track of them there? In any way that works for you, but it's consistent. Because we want to know that you can look back and see what's worked for you and what might need improvement. And then also community involvement. You know, we love to see customers or prospects that um, are passionate about their communities and involved in agriculture and are sort of a mouthpiece for egg. So, um, so what to do now? So if you're thinking about applying for credit down the road, how do you improve your character? It's, a, <laughs> um, it's an interesting thing to think about. So I think one of the easiest ways is to get involved with the egg cl clubs in your area. Um, volunteering is always a great piece. Um, you know, a lot of people will volunteer as 4-H judges or FFA teachers, you know, any of those pieces that can get you out there. Also managing your credit. We're going to talk a lot about credit in a little bit, so I'm not going to go too into depth with that, but you know what your credit score is and keep working on improving it. Um, keeping good records, I talked about that. Being tech savvy, um, it's important now in agriculture that you have some technology capabilities because there's a lot that goes, there's a lot more detailed information online now than there used to be. So being tech savvy is important. Um, keeping an updated resume, I think, is a great idea. Establishing goals um, and keeping a personal transcript. And so I, what I tell my customers to do is to start keeping track of, of this kind of stuff that they go to. So when they sit down with a, a lender, they can say, these are all the pieces that, of my foundation that I've built through these other uh, organizations and through workshops because it shows them that you're serious about, about being um, a really good operator. So the second C is capital. So capital is truly your balance sheet. Um, so since we have just a few people, how many of you have a balance sheet, have done a balance sheet? Okay. So a balance sheet is everything that you own and everything that you owe today. So you don't have to look forward or back. Um, it's just whatever's in the garage or standing out in the field right now. And so 
What you need to look at in a balance sheet is have you made progress? And so, you know, if you don't, if you haven't done one historically, that's okay. Um, start now, and you, what you want to do is look at it at the same time every year. So I encourage most people to do 1231, so the end of the of the calendar year, and create your balance sheet. And then, and we have, I can always, if anyone's interested, I can send you a form um, from from credit. And then. Start on 1231 and look at it every year on 1231. And so you're looking for um, improvement in your liquidity, which is working capital. So working capital is basically the cash on hand that you have to pay everyday expenses. Um, and then have you improved your debt to asset ratio, which is also a reflection of net worth. And so what your, your debt to asset means is how much of if you own $100,000 worth of assets, whether that's a, a, you know, cars, horses, a home, whatever that is, how much of that is funded by a bank? So if, you, if 70, 70,000 is funded by a bank, that means you have a 70% debt to asset ratio. So you want to work on, on decreasing that because the, the smaller that ratio is, the more, that, the more equity that you have in the operation, which is always better. More equity is better. <laughs> So what to do now? So like I said, create a, a balance sheet. Start tracking annually. Um, building up your cash. I mean, it, it's always counterintuitive to people because they think that cash should be earning money somehow. But you need cash on hand because if there's an emergency or if you need to make a purchase and so you can't get funding right away, you want to have some opportunity. You don't want to miss that opportunity for not having cash. So have cash. Um, pay down your credit card debts. Credit card debts. It's a worthless debt to have. And if you can avoid credit cards, you should. Um, I mean, it's, it's OK to use credit cards as like a mini operating line. You know, If you put money on there and maybe float it for a month or two and then pay it back down. But otherwise, there's no reason to carry credit card debt. And then pay extra as you're able on term and long-term debt. So if you're trying to build up your equity, um, I suggest getting your tax return every year and making an extra payment on your car or making an extra payment on your home so that you're building up a little bit more equity um, than you were originally on track to. So the next C is capacity. And what this means is, um, do you have the ability to repay this request as well as your other debt obligations? So capacity looks at what you earn and helps us decide if this is the right amount of money for you to be borrowing. And so what we look at for this is the income statement. And so the income statement is a statement that looks at January 1 of the calendar year to December 31. So whereas the balance sheet is a picture, an income sheet is, a, is like a movie because we're looking at what happened over that whole year. And so we're also looking, what we'll also look at for capacity is your historical information. So usually we'll look at three years of, of tax returns as well as your projected information. So, you know, wherever, whatever you've got going on now, what's going to happen next year, and what changes are going to be made, and what will your new revenue and expenses become to, to give us your, your net income for that. <clears throat> so what to do for capacity. Um, first is to do accurate record keeping, because you can't create an income statement. Oh, my cow picture got a little too big. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it is a mini cow, too. That's kind of funny. Okay, so is you can't create an income statement if you haven't kept accurate records because an income statement is your revenue, all the money that you brought in, less your costs, so all the money that went out. So how will you know that if you didn't keep accurate records? So first of all, keep accurate record keeping. And um, I think that says understand your costs. So you know people will say, well, I know I made, I contracted my meat at four dollars and ten cents a bushel, but do you know how much money you actually made on that? You know how much went into each of that bushel in terms of costs. You really want to nail that down. Um, also, don't be afraid to pay taxes. We always see with farmers and ranchers that they want to minimize their tax um, obligation, which is understandable. But what you do when you do that, if you minimize your tax obligation every year, you make it look like on paper that you have not made any money. And so that makes it really hard for us as lenders to, to want to lend you money because it doesn't look like you made any. So, um, it's, so it's okay. It's okay to pay taxes and it will help you in the long run as well because your social security, if it still exists, <laughs> um, is based off what your tax return say that you earned. So pay taxes if you can. Um, and then also try and maintain your non-farm income. 
Um, as you, it's easy to work a lot of hours in agriculture, but you know, even if you're working 60 hours on your farm, you might not be working what that 60 hours might mean in a salary. So keep up your non-farm income as long as you can. So the next C is collateral. Um, so what we're looking at here as loan officers is what's going to happen to us if this loan defaults. So you need to make sure that the collateral that you're buying um, is quality. Um, it's something that will be able to market it. I mean, it's not really your job to decide if it's, uh, we will appraise it, obviously, but just make sure that, you know, this is something that will be marketable. So, and what I mean by that is if you're buying 20 acres and they're asking 400000 I mean, there's no way that that's the right price for that. And that wouldn't be great security for us because we could never get that 400000 for it. So whatever it is that you're looking at, um, bring in the most descriptive um, information that you can to your loan officer so that they can help you decide if this is the right fit. Do you have to have collateral? Yes. So what else, besides land, what could you Okay, have? so pretty much any collateral matches up to the loan request. So if you if you're doing an operating loan, which would be for um, your day-to-day -day expenses, um, like if you needed to buy fuel, you would draw money from your operating loan to go pay fuel. So an operating loan is secured by chattels. And what I mean by that is if you um, have hay or cows or supplies, like if you have fertilizer on hand, the, the collateral for that operating loan is those pieces. If you were getting a cow note, uh, the cows would be collateral for that. Um, same thing if you were buying a, a hoop house or a greenhouse. That loan for that with the collateral would be the hoop house or the greenhouse. Okay. So, like if, if you were going to just do um, food mm -hmm. uh, or herbs, okay. what would be? The plants would be the collateral. They would. Okay. Yeah. Plants can count as collateral. Oh. Um, so, the trick is that every lender has a different uh, comfort level. With, with collateral. So like farm credit will loan up to say 80% on cows. So if the cows cost you 10,000, um, we would loan you up to 8,000. Because we need to have that 20% buffer. So plants, you know, those are, are more difficult. Yeah. So if you need to buy $10,000 for the plants, they would probably only loan you up to like 6,000. Okay. But that'll vary on each, on each one. So, that, so that's what's called loan to value. So you need to talk to your loan officer about, okay, what are the loan to value, uh, what's your loan to value underwriting standards, basically, for these different products? And then they can help you understand how far they can go. Because um, like land, so for farm credit, normally we'll only lend 60% of the, the purchase price, but in ag vision, we'll be able to go, we can stretch further, so we can go up to 80%. So there's just a lot of barriers. It's really subjective, sure. unfortunately. <laughs> so if, that's the case, so if you need to buy your plants and you don't have enough collateral, what are your secondary sources? So I think it's important to come into every financing request with an idea of, okay, what else do I have to put up? And typically, for most people getting started, that might be a, a rig, you know, like a, a pickup or a car or something that you own free and clear that you can put up. Okay, so the last one is conditions, and this is um, a pretty boring one. It's just, basically, does this loan make sense? Um, so what's the purpose of the loan? What's the amount, the term? This is kind of all banking jargon. So the conditions of your loan, how does it all come together? And so that tells you the conditions, um, if they put any special covenants on it. So if they say, yes, we'll give you this loan, but it's subject to you doing this, this, and this. Those are conditions. So that's what the conditions is. So, so these are some, unfortunately, because I know probably a lot of people here might be interested in vegetables. and we don't have the database yet to create the same underwriting standards. We're still working on it. I have the most loans in the state of Montana to vegetable producers, and I have three. <laughs> so it's new. So, but this is some information that I have about, um, so, so this is for small grains. And so what these are telling you, so current ratio, 1.71 to 1, that's green. So that's a green light for us. So if you have a current ratio over 1.75 to 1, and what that, and that's, that's a little bit tricky, and, and if you have questions about it, I can talk to you about it afterwards. But these are, um, current ratio is a liquidity. So what is your cash, you know, anything that's like close to cash, meaning um, if you have inventory on hand that can be sold, or you have um, vegetables that can be sold cash on hand,
whatever is close to cash less uh, or divided by whatever is the closest debts that you have to pay. So that's liquidity. Debt to asset ratio, that's something that we talked about. So a green light would be less than 30,000. So that means that you own 70% of the assets that you have on hand. Um, another one is debt coverage ratio. That's a capacity one. And so that says there that for every dollar and 75 cents that you have, that you earn, um, that's, you have, you have a dollar and 75 cents to repay every dollar of debt. So you can see how, you know, anything that's red, this is, if red light doesn't necessarily mean no, it just means that we need to find other ways to mitigate that. So those are the ratios for small grains. Um, and these are the ratios for cattle. So some of them are a little bit the same, um, but, you know, they each, and these can all vary too. I mean, we don't put people in these boxes. These just help us decide, okay, what direction are they going and how can we help them mitigate some of this risk moving forward so this is a solid loan decision for us. Okay, so this is something that I like to show because, F and I, I didn't talk about FSA in this um, presentation, but they have a lot of uh, programs available as well for beginning farmers. Um, and so Farm Service Agency and Farm Credit work together frequently. And so if you are wondering, well, where do I, who do I go to first? If, if you can get a loan from FSA, always go to FSA first because they have really great interest rates and um, really flexible repayment terms. So I think it's always safe to start with FSA. Um, so this is some ways to look at that. So how much do I have for a down payment? If you have 20% or less, start with FSA. Um, how much debt compared to my aff assets do I have? If more than 65% of your assets are funded by the bank, start with FSA. And then also, what's my credit score? So the minimum credit score for farm credit for our Egg Vision program is 650. So if you're below that, I would start with FSA. And they'll work with you, and then they'll tell you, you know, I think you can actually qualify for conventional lending, so maybe go to farm credit. So they won't steer you wrong. Is, does the FSA have similar, like, with mortgages where you have to pay a more, like an interest to or a fee to have the FSA loan? Do you know? Like a private mortgage insurance? Yeah. No, they don't have that. Mm -mm. We, I Oh, so why wouldn't you go to FSA? Because sometimes people's financials are too strong. Because they're truly meant, to, you know, they're subsidized by the government, so they're truly meant to be there for people that actually need that. So that's why. So how to prepare. Um, so these are the things to bring to a lender meeting. So a brief bio about yourself. You know, we're humans too, so we want to know who you are and why we should get behind you. Um, your balance sheet, just for today, what you currently own and own own and owe, your tax returns for the past three years, also bring a business plan. So make sure that they know exactly what it is that you're doing um, and make sure that it pencils. So uh, does it make money? <laughs> um, and then also a description of what it is that you're trying to buy. Yeah, you bet. And I, I'm, I'd be happy to email you this slide deck too. Yeah, you bet. I can do that. So this is, um, I'll just touch on this briefly. This is the decision process. I just put this up there. Uh, it doesn't always go this way. Sometimes loan officers can make the decision themselves. But this is sometimes what we go through as loan officers trying to get loans approved. So if it takes a long time, be patient because this is what's going on is that sometimes multiple people have to look at this. This is what it is at Farm Credit. At other places, um, they'll have like a, the VP of credit might be or the SVP of credit might be a loan committee. So sometimes this just, it might take a few months, especially if your loan you know, is, is kind of a stretch for that lender. Um, they just need, they need time to go through these steps. So credit scores. So, oops, I'm going to talk um, now about credit scores. So credit scores are, they predict your financial risk over time. Um, so the, the lowest is 385 to 849. Um, they, they're used by a lot of people in their decision making process when they're thinking about you as, as someone that they should do business with. So this is the credit score ranges. I always laugh at this graphic. It's terrible. It's like such a strong term. Um, but really, if you're below 500, um, you know, you need, you need to start doing some work. Um, average um, is actually below where most lenders are. Most lenders want to see you at 680 or above. So you want to try and get in that good, very good, and excellent range. This is how credit is determined. Um, so the biggest portion of that is your payment history. Um, have you paid all of your credit accounts that you've had on time? That is the biggest factor. Also, amounts owed. And what that means is that whenever someone commits credit to you, there's a limit to that credit. So that they might, if you get a credit card, they'll say you can lend 
ten, you can borrow $10,000 on this credit card. And if you are at 9,999, that's going to be a derogatory, not derogatory necessarily, but it's going to lower your credit score. Um, if you are at $1,000 of that $10,000 commitment, that's showing that, hey, I can responsibly manage this. I'm not going to max it out. So that increases your score. Um, your length of credit history, how long have you been using credit? Um, the types of credit used, so that's mixed. Do you have a credit card? Do you have an intermediate term loan like a car loan? Do you have a long-term real estate mortgage? And what that tells the credit bureau is that you can responsibly manage different types of credit all at once and that you are able to qualify for different types of credit. And then also how much credit have you applied for recently? How much new credit do you have in your report? So where to start with credit? Um, this is truly a free website that um, I recommend to everyone. It's great. I use it myself. Um, they don't take a credit card. They don't do anything like that. Um, so this is a really easy way to look up your credit score for free at any time. Um, and I want to also clarify that you can look up your credit as much as you want, and it won't do anything to your credit score. Um, this is what the website looks like. So it's really easy. There's not a lot of information that they ask for. Um, so what do you do if you don't have any credit? So one thing you can do is become an authorized user. And that means, you know, if your mom or your dad or your husband or whoever, if they have credit, um, you can become an authorized user on one of their accounts. And that means that you don't, you don't necessarily have their credit card or access to their bank account. You just show up as someone on, linked to their credit. And then that will start creating a score for you. Um, also applied for a, seer, a secured credit card. So you will put up cash. So say you have $250 in the bank, and then you can apply for a credit card that uses that $250 as collateral. So they're much easier to qualify for. So you only can ever borrow $250, because you, but you can pay it off. They know you can pay it off all the time. So that's a good way to um, get credit. Also applying for store credit. So you know, in Target when they're like, sign up today and save 5%. Um, they're really easy to qualify for, but you have to be really careful with them because people forget that they have these cards and then they forget to pay them <laughs> and then and then it becomes a bad thing. So, you know, I, I would suggest like, if that's the only way you can get credit, um, apply for a store credit card, but then monitor the heck out of that so that nothing happens to it. Um, no, but this, this is for truly people that, that don't have credit. So if you're just trying to build your credit, you don't need to worry about this. This is just for people that ha don't have a score yet because then people have never had one. Um, so these are my tips for improving your score. So first and foremost is to pay everything on time. So setting up automatic payments, um, keeping your oldest line open. My mom opened an, a Macy's card for me when I was 16 that was connected to her account. And when she closed that, that was my oldest line of credit. When she closed that, my credit score went down 75 points. So it's really important that you keep those oldest lines open. Um, manage your inquiries. So you can ask people, are you going to make a soft pull or a hard pull? So a soft pull is when they just look at your credit score, but they don't use it to make a decision. And that doesn't affect your credit score. A hard pull shows up as an inquiry on the CBR, and that will lower your score. Um, using credit cards to your advantage. So you know it's OK to have a credit card, but like I said, pay it off every month. Have variety in your debt. Um, add notes to medical collections. So that we see as a different kind of default. Um, you know, we understand that. People go through really hard stuff sometimes. And so if you, you can actually go into your credit report and add a note right there that just says, this is what happened. This is why it hasn't been paid yet. This is how I'm resolving it. And then your loan officer will, will treat that differently than they would you know, if you hadn't paid off your target credit card. Um, and then beginning to monitor your credit. That's the first thing and the most important thing, I think, is just knowing where you're at today so you know how much you need to improve. Oops. Um, so knowing, like I said, knowing your credit score, a good score is important. I think people, you know, sometimes underestimate how much credit scores go into our decision making process. So having a good score is really important. And um, then above all else, be, please pay everything on time. So the last thing that we'll look at, um, I thought we'd look at some actual credit reports because that's kind of fun. So this is someone that has not had a great experience with their credit score right now. So they have a oops, um, 614 credit score. Um, you can see that what that says up there, those 30 days, 60 to 90 days, that's how many times they paid something late. So that person paid their bills 90 days late 40 times. So don't do that. <laughs> also, the percent available is 40%. So that means that 
uh, they've used 60% um, of the committed credit out there to them. So if they have a hundred, they, they had a hundred thousand dollars committed to them, they've used 60,000 of that. And that's, you know, the credit score doesn't like to see that. Um, this is their uh, actual, the, the different accounts that they've had. So this top one is um, a Capital One card, and you can see that that was canceled by the credit grantor. So that means Capital One said, I've had enough of you. <laughs> I'm canceling this credit. You're done. Um, so that's not great. We don't like to see that. Also, this next line is child support. So they stopped paying child support here. And so that tells me a lot of different things. Um, I think about character with that. I think about um, their repayment ability. I mean, th that's a big red flag. And then also they have this mortgage, which they have also paid either 60 or 90 days late many times. So as a, as a bank, I don't want to lend a mortgage to you when you don't pay your own mortgage on time now. So that's the bad, not so good. Um, now we have a great credit score. So this is an 811, so it's really hard to get above an 820. So this person never pays anything late. They have 98% of the credit that's been committed to them available. So if they have $100,000 committed to them, they've only used $2,000 of that. Um, and then this is theirs. So they, have, they do have a credit card. Um, there is only $68 that they've used on that. Um, they pay it on time every month. They have their mortgage, which again, the ones mean that it's been paid on time. So their mortgage, they pay that um, on time every month as well. And then they do have another credit card at Cabela's, which um, the, they started that in 2002. So that shows me that they've been, they've been managing that credit card for you know, 15 years. So that's, that's a really good piece of their credit as well. Why do inquiries bring it down? Um, because sometimes it means that you're trying like, frantically to apply for credit. And so like, if you've applied for six different credit cards and had six different inquiries, it's just uh, a, sort of a red flag to the credit bureau, like why is this person seeking so much credit? But there is a caveat to that. If you're um, shopping for a car or a home loan, um, pretty much anything that any inquiries within a two week period are consolidated to one inquiry. So if you're just looking in terms of, I'm trying to find the best rate for my mortgage, and so three different loan officers pull your credit report in two weeks, that gets consolidated to one. Yeah, I did that for a little longer period, and I can't yeah. bring it down my score. Yeah, I have, it is a frustrating piece of it. <laughs> Everyone goes through that. So um, that's it for credit scores, and that's it for my presentation. So I'll take a couple minutes to answer questions if anyone has any. To come back up after a little bit, or do you just yes. Yep. Um, inquiries fall off after two years. Okay. So it takes two years for an inquiry. Wow. So I'm kind of wondering, we're, we're thinking about expanding and building a barn, shop, house combination. Okay. Does that fall because of the because of the house being there? Does that fall outside of the agricultural thing, or that be still considered in there? We call it a house, and <laughs> <laughs> um, it depends um, on what it is. So we do have a country home loan program which it acts more like a conventional real estate mortgage. And if they'll, they'll help you build a barn shop house. Um, but there are some specific requirements about what you're going to do with that land as well. So I can pass that information along to you if you're interested. Yeah, because we just didn't know if, which direction we should go, conventional home loan versus the I would say probably like Wells Fargo or someone might have a hard time with that. But, um, you know, Stockman Bank, uh, farm credit, um, Yellowstone Bank. There's those are some ag lenders that are a little bit more familiar with that, so they could probably help you. When I saw your presentation last time, I kind of got that that you should go with these other lenders first, and then you're kind of a fallback. But you guys have such great programs. Can we just start with? Yeah, lenders? you can just start with that. I I think that um, I just like to encourage people to go to FSA because of their interest rates, mm -hmm. because they have like one and a half, two and a half percent. So if you can qualify for FSA, I think that's great, but you can always start with me and I can look through your stuff and, you know, see if I think that it'll be a good fit and, you know, if we can bring FSA in to participate on something so that, you know, you can kind of get half your loan through them at one and a half percent and half with us, which might be a little bit higher, but then you would still have access to all of our programs. So I think either, either way is great. If, if we want to add a full solar system, mm -hmm. uh, panel system, is that something that can be uh, finance through yes. mm -hmm. it is I I always hesitate with those 
because there have you talked to NRCS or USDA about any of that? I've only done Okay. <laughs> there are a lot of programs that exist for some of these things and where you can get it for free. And so um, I'd be happy to talk with you about who else is out there that, because if you, I mean, if you can get free money, get free money first. Like free money. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say I'll pass along my contacts at NRCS and the USDA for you um, that you could talk to about solar awesome. panels. And then if you still need the money or if you need an operating loan or for whatever it is that you're doing, then we could look at that from a farm credit angle. Is it NR? NRCS. Oh, really? I didn't look at that. Is there an office in Kalispell? I think that yeah, there is. is. Yeah. I think they're. I think they're hooked with some. Um, no, I mean you guys. Oh, for us, no. You will get to go to Missoula. So I, um, I oh, no, cover like twenty-one. Um, all the Flathead Valley, and then Missoula, Dillon, Bozeman, Lewis Town Billings. So I pretty much have <laughs> Montana, basically, <laughs> is what I have. But so I would be your person, and I have lots of business cards. So if we wanted to buy a, a place, we have to. Okay make an offer on it first and then come to you guys? Or? Yeah, because uh, we don't do pre-approvals because we create all of our financial analysis specific to that property. Because an egg, each one is different in terms of what it can earn. Um, so I would say, you know, if you get it by sell and then make it contingent on, on the appraisal and financing and all those pieces so that you have a lot of ways to get out of it, that's a good time to come and, and look at, even though it seems a little counterintuitive, like I don't have approval from the bank, but because we do that so specific to that property that it's easy, it's a good place to start when you get it by sell. Is it a pretty tough turnaround then as far as approval? No, <laughs> I'll be honest, it's not. It's these are a lot of times what we look at in egg vision. Um, you know, there's 20 reasons that we should deny it, but that's why we have this program is so that we can work through all those reasons and mitigate all that risk. But it just takes time. There's a lot more due diligence, a lot more verification, a lot more getting permission from people. So it's just a longer process. And, and then when we bring FSA in, who's a government entity, and they have a lot going on as well. You know, then it it just delays the process further. So you know, I would say um, my fastest turnaround would probably be two months. Um, the more involved we get FSA or other pieces, sometimes it takes up to four. Uh, that's worst case scenario. <laughs> Would you recommend trying to get farm service before, say, man mortgage or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. Okay. Yeah, anytime you could use farm service agency, I would. I think that they have, you know, they're truly meant for this. Mm -hmm. and, and they have almost no origination fees and they can waive your appraisal and they can really save you a lot of money. The, the cost that you pay is the oversight and some of the hoops that you have to jump through because again, it's the government. So. I want to do an ag education center where people come and stay in those oh, yeah. cabins and then they're able to learn mm -hmm. things about permaculture. So, yeah. Yeah. I, want to, I want to link the ag tour and some ag group. There you go. <clears throat> Okay, well, I think we're running out of time, but thank you, everyone. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have questions. I want to get my email to you. Yeah, absolutely. If anything.